like I'm the only one that's ever been vocal. But I think that's part of why, anything. at least for me, like why I respect you, mm. you know? And I think that builds you more favor like publicly, not that you give a shit about it, but you know, at least that you're willing to come in and stand by your position one way or the other, you yeah, know? Yeah, okay, fair. But yeah, the other ones, they just, whenever they do come out, they just look like a bunch of fucking idiots over and over and over again yeah. anyway, so. Um, all right, let's start with the US Open. We're here, another year in Harris. Give me your f excitement level, your hopes, your dreams. Sorry, I'm just putting some lip balm on. Okay, just got to prep a little bit. Yeah, it's for, it's for, I've waited all day just so that we can see you put on makeup. It's beautiful, Emily. It's not makeup. It's Everyone keeps saying it's a vape. Well, it it's makes it, yeah, it makes it shine a little bit. Yeah, see? It's good. Listen, you'll know all about this when your girls grow up. Yeah, I know. I'm, uh, <laughs> my oldest has a boyfriend. I found out when I got back home. No, and I about lost how old it, yeah. is she? She's... 13, I think. Oh, my God. Oh, Losing God, it. you're so dead. I wasn't ready. You're so I dead. I wasn't ready, no. I feel sorry for my dad. And then I texted her and I said, I said, so when were you going to tell me about your boyfriend? And she left me on red for about three days <laughs> before she found... <laughs> oh, my God, I got so much yeah. respect for your yeah, daughter. Yeah, 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 yeah. She knows her dad too well. <laughs> All right, take two. Sorry, right. No, no, you're that's okay. right, you can put that out loud. Yeah, no, that one will be good on there. <laughs> US Open, we're here. Is yeah. this uh, what you expected? Um... I think it's cool out there. I mean, I'm always very biased, but the vibe's been so great out there. The energy's been, yeah. you know, phenomenal. It's been a few players, like, kind of losing today. Today, yeah. yeah. Like, Surprising. a few, you know, a few of the top players, stuff like that. And um, But it's still a great tournament. Um, we, you know, it's obviously all I want is thousands of people coming through this these doors sort of yeah. thing like the Moscone Cup but it's not going to happen overnight yeah it's our fourth year here at Harris um and I think the tournament is growing here um we're going to be returning back next year we've got some dates in the diary That's um, great. and we'll be announcing them in the next couple of days so we found like a new date in the calendar so I mean the US Open is like shipped around in so many different yeah. dates. But you got to remember, we had it scheduled um, in the COVID year, didn't we? And then it moved and yeah. things like that. So we found a good a good time in August because, you know, the weather's been lovely. The weather's here. been great. Yeah, absolutely. It's been beautiful. And it makes it so much more enjoyable for people coming in for a couple of days or things like that. And we found a great home here at Harrods Resort and it works really nicely. The players love it. Yeah. The players seem to have a great time here on site. Some of the... Players have been talking to me this week just saying, look, we like the hotel, we like the setup. It's a nice little walk yeah, um, sort of thing. So it works. The hotel's gotten a lot better, especially compared to last year. There's more it things. Has, and it's, you know, yeah. they've refurbed a few of the restaurants. They've opened up a new one. Look, listen, we're in the same boat as the players. You know, we we live and breathe yeah. in this resort. Um, we eat here. We're, we're not going out for dinners because, right. you know, we sit here in this office, basically. This I didn't even know this was here. Yeah. <laughs> this is literally like our, our home. And last night we sat in here and ate dinner from the new pasta place. So we're, we're the same as the players. You know, we want it to be accommodating. We all stay here for a good 10 days and it should be, it should be nice for them. But listen, it's the US Open and it's... It, it just seems like it's, I always get really excited about the US yeah. Open. and It's got a lot of history. It's got a load of history. And I don't know what it is about the event that makes it different, but like, I feel like I enjoy myself so much more here than like, say I did at the European Open. Yeah. Which is like a weird thing to say, but like, I love the European Open. Well, what's the vibe like people wise, crowd wise? No, the, probably like the crowds were bigger in the earlier yeah. days of the European Open. I think it's just, it's like what you said, it's the status of this event. Yeah, I mean, for years people were saying it was bigger than a world championship, and I thought they were yeah. just, you know, being Shane cheerleaders, but, you know, <laughs> I think players legitimately felt that way. And, I mean, the, the fields over there in the world championships back then were terrible anyway, but, like, it, there seems to be this prestige that pay, players really look forward to winning this title, to having it, you know, on their resume. Yeah, well, prize money also helps. Yeah. That it's, you know, a bit bigger than, obviously, the other open events, but it's been running for f over 40 years. You know, some of our other Opens, like the European Open, UK Open, are in their third year of right. birth, essentially. So, but it's, it's been really special this week, obviously, with Barry competing. Um, I know that I've, I didn't even read any comments of this, but I think Carl mentioned it yesterday. There were a few comments that, like, Andy Goldstein, Barry on the TV table, oh, fuck off. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. of course yeah, they yeah. should be on the TV right. table. We've had, you know, not many people in 
the US, I think, would know about like Andy Goldstein. But he's, I mean, he's big time in the UK. He hosts like a drive time talk show on talk sport between like four till seven. I think like there's this like crowd of defenders that just love the sport and they just feel like yeah. there's this, you know, sacrilegious to have these people. They don't, you know, they no, haven't earned I their know. place on there. But and like, um, it pull needs a little twist, a little, and, yeah. and then now we're here today, the Netflix is following them around, I right? I know, so, and it's just like, the thing is, all I say is that, look, I love those, those hardcore fans because, you know, they're the ones that are there, the diehard sort of thing, but sometimes they just got to trust us. Yeah, yeah. And look, Well, I that's know, a lot easier said than done, but well, you guys have a track said, record as well? Well, I don't know. Maybe the ball set's probably um, the only thing that I've got on my track record that doesn't really initiate any sort of trust within me. Well, <laughs> so yeah. Take, maybe we, the purple five. Are we going to bring but, the five ball? Yeah. Um, so that's probably the only thing that got in my locker that would uh, not ease any sort of trust. But all I would say is just trust the process. Like... We're not doing it because we're sitting here giddy yeah. going, oh, look, look at this. We're doing it because there's a reason for it. Yeah. Everything we do, there's a reason. We sit and we think about it. There's a marketable opportunity. We're not hosting these events because, you know, it's just like one year going and we're going to, like, do the same each year. We bought, like, someone like Andy Goldstein over because there's a huge exposure Right. You know, there's an opportunity there. The fans that are watching his platforms and his shows and his things, let's Who bring them over. Who would never yeah, yeah. normally watch Paul. Right. They all talk about football. Football's huge. These people are, you know, following Andy and on his journey to come and participate in something that was his dream. Yeah. You know, there's, there's a lot of cross-promotion there and a lot of exposure. So, and look, he's out of the tournament now. And, you know, we've had some great matches on that TV table. And, you know, I think that we try to take wherever we are in the world and like if we're in the US Open you'll see that every opportunity we've had there's always an American on the TV streams yeah, yeah I agree with you um, and you know it'll be the same when we go to Hanoi Open you know we're gonna obviously it'll be Vietnamese players that are on the streams yeah. so it's gonna be different and it's different to everywhere we go but that's what makes the different Open so special well let me ask you this on the note of an Open 256 not a full field though. Were these no. were the qualifiers a good thing, Fucking a bad thing? <laughs> you're rolling it in, I don't yeah. you? Oh. No, I mean, you know, let's just. No, it's your fair. Yeah. Um, look, it's it kills me, and and I think that's why we released the draw so late. Yeah. Because it kills me, publishing a draw with buys. Right. I hate it. That's why, like our first day, it was you know kind of like not putting the big names out because obviously they had buys, but there's there's an issue where the qualifiers that we've set and listen we're, I'm probably too hard on ourselves with it but this is the first year of like qualifiers right yeah, we yeah. come out and we said it's the top 128 pros versus unseeded qualifiers right and the structure of the qualifiers not 100% you know there's you know some organizers haven't even paid us yeah some organizers were organizing it and putting themselves in. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's kind of like I take it back to maybe two years ago when we were doing first in the ranking events. Yeah, it was a lot of scrutiny, a lot of shit talking and yeah, confusion. And then, we, and, and then we looked at it, we looked yeah. at the organizers and we went, right, actually, what ranking events are good? And, and by the way, we're not at that stage yet with the ranking yeah. events, but year one, it was tough like that. Same with the qualifiers, but what I didn't want to do. And when we did like release the, you know, some spots out, um, it was a case of everyone who signed up for a qualifier got an opportunity to like buy in sort of thing. But what I didn't want to do is give up and go, let's just put all the yeah. seats on sale because then we'd be taking a massive step back because the future is the qualifiers. Well, while I can agree with you, I think like, you know, 256 is tough. And, you know, if you have, let's say, a balance between if you're holding back, let's say, you know, I don't know, 160 or 128 or whatever when it comes to your top players, mm. and then you open it up to X amount for qualifiers. And I'm sure everyone's got the best idea because I know how the pool oh, world is. Know, it's, yeah, yeah. it's fucking brutal. But like, you know, having buys is difficult, especially in the opening. And especially when you think about how competitive it's been from the very beginning. I mean, we, you talked about, you know, the losses today, Filler loses, Carlo mm -hmm. loses, all on mm -hmm. the same day. Who would have thought that before you get yeah. down to final 64? And it's a great time. And I mean, I'm not saying it to pick on y'all, but um, obviously we would have loved to have 256 as you guys would have Listen, as well. Listen, me and you both, 
uh, it's not, not a laziness thing or anything like that. It is just also we had some seeded pros drop out last minute. Um, uh, it's an interesting point because one note, one notable Kachi is not here. Yeah. Any uh, prick? Yeah. Any <laughs> gets, in, gets into li listen. Is yeah. that the reason why? Because I can't say I would blame him <laughs> if that's the reason why. You know. He's, I mean, look, I love Kachi to death, and so I'll happily say this to his face, yeah. and I have said this to his face. But you know, he makes Moscone, he makes Rose. He's like, okay, chill. Everything's yeah. no. Listen, he, in all fairness. Um, I think he had some family. Um, he had some family commitments. He yeah. had to stay at home, and so listen, I get it. But also, you know, he can yeah. he can mm -hmm. chill a little bit now. But yeah. also, that's how do, okay. How do you avoid that though, with the weight of the world championships and how much prize money it is versus everywhere else? Because well, now you you don't want to run into a situation where you have these guys that can say, well, you know what, I've already yeah, already but it's crossed only the finish be line. Two guys, and yeah. so I'm not dismissing that. But also, what Catchy's decided this week, that's actually all right. Yeah. You know, the tournament still goes on. And it's still a great event. It's, yeah, still, yeah. it's still absolutely unreal. You know, I'd love to have him here. And it would be fabulous to have, you know, like the runner up from the World Championship here. But the show still goes on. And if he wants to stay at home, have, that's absolutely fine with me. If he sits there and goes, you know what? I've been traveling a little bit and I don't fancy doing it. Like, Shane said to me out there just now, he said, you know, um, after Hanoi, I don't really want to play in any other events. Yeah. I just want to chill until the Moscone. Shane, you do that. Are because you just saying that because we got a camera on or are you legitimately no, telling them that? Honestly, like, it's fine because like I said, the show still goes on. Yeah. Um, the only thing that gives me the needle is when they do it last minute because yeah. then I can't fill it up with a seeded player. And that's, right. why, I was, that's why I get frustrated. But at the end of the day, like, this is, this is the beauty of the tour and picking and choosing. The players should be able to sit there and go, do you know what? Yeah, I have a family commitment here. Yeah. Or I fancy going on holiday at well, this point. Well, I mean, point. plus the schedule's been The schedule's tough. It's rough. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, the thing yeah. is, it's not going to get any easier. Right. It's not going to get any easier. So if the top players want to, you know, take some time off, go take some time off. They're the only ones that are going to miss out. Yeah. So, you know, obviously I'm only joking when I've called Catchy a prick. I, I know he'll understand the banter. <laughs> I appreciate it, by the way, from the content standpoint, no, I, I do. Um, but I hear your point on like the World Championship with the prize money. Obviously my um, instant reaction would be fine then, I'll just half the prize money for the World Championship. No, and obviously that's not what I'm getting at, <laughs> no, right? Know, but like, is there, have you guys given any thought to, is there a better system versus just dollars for no, um, I know waiting like waiting events versus others. I know everyone thinks that's the solution, but it's not. Okay. The points versus and prize money, like points equals prize money. Prize money equals points. Sorry, I'm getting it muddled up. It's the most simplest thing. When you start having these structures and the different ranking events, and by the way, these ranking events aren't absolutely up to scratch yet. Yeah. It ain't the right time to be start starting to do that. But I do understand that there's a, you know, a situation with the, the prize money, but on the flip side, you're sitting there going, well, wow, fuck, what an opportunity that we've got here now. Of course, yeah. And we've never had it before until, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've never had it before, but also it just puts pressure on us to increase prize money for tournaments. Do you feel that pressure? A little bit. Yeah. Yeah, and that's okay. You know, that's, that's okay. It just means we've got to work harder. I like that. Go ahead. So... Yeah, we just work harder with it. We, um, but we, we're not going to make silly decisions and, you know, quick fire decision, go, right, we have to increase the prize money because no one's going to play the tour or whatever. Are these type of conversations happening in offices like this with you all? Yeah. You know, Barry's been here this week. Yeah. Um, and if anything, him playing in the tournament has ignited even more passion in him about Paul, if that was even possible. Right. But he loves this sport so much, like he adores it. And for him to go out there, like I'm sure everyone's seen that clip of the two nine combo. He did great, yeah, yeah. And if you've seen his facial expression. I wish we had a million berries in, the, in, the, in pool players. I mean, that is the man who has done and achieved so much in life, done so much in different sports. And he sat there and went, what do I want? I want to go play in the US Open. And it genuinely made him happy. 
And he said that that was something that money couldn't buy. Yeah. So someone like Barry, it makes you realize that there are people like amateurs yeah. who have the same dream. Of course, yeah. And to be able to present that opportunity to players is fucking amazing. And to be fair, Barry and, and Goldstein were in the practice room hitting balls without a camera crew at times. You know, yeah. like you can tell they were taking it seriously and didn't want to go and be made a fool of while they yeah. were out there because they were they were le legitimately yeah. given effort. Well, they weren't doing this as a joke. They were both doing this because it was a dream for them. Yeah. So it's it's like any other amateur who has gone and played in a qualifier that's wanted to come And there's come so many here. stories like that there here. So, yeah, I've yeah. been around the arena and I'm talking to people and talking to players, asking them why you know, they're here and they're doing things like that. And it's a case of that that's their dream. And they want to, you know, come in and come and play an event like this, play against the likes of Shane Van Boning. That's their dream yeah. to play out there on the TV table. Can you imagine? So, yeah, there was a story like that last year where like a son played Shane or something or played Sky and his dad had, had signed up for the spot and then I think he passed away. So he oh ended up gosh. taking his spot. And it was a great story last year. But like you don't get stuff like that unless you have these events and there's plenty like that. There was like a 76 year old man, I think you played, um, uh, God, oh, he played yesterday. He, no, he played Mario He on the street yes. table. Yes, yeah, yeah, I yeah. met him. Yeah. Um, 78, I think. And he got in on a qualifier as well. Yeah. Like there's balance there and it makes sense. And I'm, I'm just asking you just for the sake of being fair to the argument. Mm. But let me ask you this. What's your biggest area of opportunity for you? Like, where do you think that you need to do a better job? <laughs> Fucking hell, all right. <laughs> Off I go. <laughs> I feel like I'm looking in the mirror. It's like, um, listen, I ask myself that every day. What can we do better? How can we improve? I think it's just a case of we just, you just got to listen. Yeah. Because, you know, like qualifying structure or the prize fund structure, we don't have all the answers, but what we do do is we do listen to feedback. Yeah. We're listening to a lot of feedback from the top players. And we've seen that over the years, even down to the breaking format that oh. you guys are using now. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I got criticized for that from, yeah. you know, Blazers, essentially. Yeah. I got criticized for listening to the players. Um, but from, from our side, I'm not saying that, the, you know, some of the players get it right all the time, because also, you know, one player might see their vision if it was up to pool players, they'd be playing race, <laughs> race to 13 every round. No, but also and, they'd change yeah. it to the different tournaments depending yeah. on, you know, how things are going. But that's why we're here. We bring order. We bring, yeah. you know, the professionalism to it and we bring some structure. But it's, you know, it's a democracy. It's not a dictatorship. We sit here and we go, right, feedback, you know, what you want to do. And it's not just talking to the top eight. It's talking to someone who's ranked 100. It's talking to someone who's ranked 64, talking to the different players who are on the tour. Yeah. And, every, all, you know, everyone wants this tour to boom, and it will. Because when you've got someone like Barry, who supports it and has complete Trusted passion Trusted you with the keys it, to the car. Yeah. You've got someone like me who's relentless, yeah. and I will I love not that, by the way. stop. Yeah. I've got a team around me that is absolutely exceptional. And you're out there sweating it like a fan half the day. Because I see you out there just peeking your head on this match and that match. And <laughs> I get annoyed yeah. when I have to sit in here and do work. Yeah. Because I want to be out there. I want to go see what's happening. And it annoys me when I see a player and I saw them at a table and I'm like, shit, like, what was the score? Because I've <clears> had to go and do something. It really annoys me, like, not knowing or something like that. But all I say is just... We have to be better every single day. Yeah. And every day we make mistakes and we learn and, you know, we try to be better. And, you know, what? that's all that we can do. Just try to be the best versions of ourselves and try and get the tour to be the best version of itself. It's going to be incredible, well, this tour. Will next year be better? Of course. Yeah. It has to be. Otherwise, I'll quit. <laughs> because what's the point in what's yeah. the point of me sat here? Or are you going to be doing more fishing shows now? <laughs> no. Yeah. Honestly, I'm telling you, there was an hour of me fishing where I caught 40 pounds. And that was some of I the... I can't see that because yeah, you just put on lip gloss whenever we started. <laughs> and, you know, you're looking like dressed to the tens every time no, that I see you. Listen, and... I didn't have any makeup on. I felt comfortable. I had my, my boots on. 
I was having my t-shirt and I had my hair and braids. The last time at the Derby, you had a truck too, right? And then yeah, now, I was driving a truck. I bloody loved fishing. it. I said to Phoebe, I said, listen, when we come into Atlanta City next year, I said, I'm renting a car because I want to drive my 30 minutes to Sephora. I want to get all oh, my Lord. Sephora out items. Um, but look, it's just, it's, if we don't strive to be better every tournament every year, then what the fucking point are we doing here? Because otherwise, the, it yep. shouldn't be me sat here. If I lose that motivation, if I lose that buzz, I mean, what, the players well, got to believe in that? The players showed a lot of faith in you, and they have over the years mm. from, you know, traveling across the world and, you know, promises that sounded good, you know, and then you guys deliver with things like the World Championship and, you know, the biggest Ray's prize Cup. fund, Ray's Cup, finally. Yeah, after Everyone after was talking about that, right? Yeah, for years. Everyone was just yeah. talking about it, and no one ever done anything about it. Yeah. Thought, right, come on then. Make let's, it happen. Let's do it. At, listen, you know me. I pushed it for a long time. I was absolutely <laughs> in love with the idea. I'm hoping to be there um, in a couple of months you as well. You should do. You should come. I'm, come I'm, do the Hanoi and then the Raiders. That's the plan so far, yeah. So we'll see. On the note of Hanoi, yes. right? Obviously some news lately. You mentioned top 16 or top players or whatever. And so uh, we can't ignore the elephant in the room. Last year, whenever we were here, <laughs> WPA was uh, and ACBS were threatening bans on players. Here we are a year later. Kind of the mm -hmm. same story, but you got the players to all buy in and and take a public stance. Any, um, what was the story behind that, or you know, what was the conversations like between Matchroom and the players in that regard? Look, I d look I'm not really interested in going into de you know, into it to be honest, because there's not really much to to say on it. All you know, yeah, we're in the same position as last year. The event went ahead, and it and was the, the best event of the year. The event was incredible. Yeah. The atmosphere was world class. The players' social media f just shot up. And that's not whoever came in the, the quarterfinals or anything. All of the players' yeah. social media shot up. They were turning up to pool halls and getting flowers and they were live on TikTok. Yeah. I went to a pool hall myself and it was phenomenal. You know, we had a, we, we've got a great partner on the ground via content and they delivered really great production for us on that live stream as well. You um, felt the buzz. You felt oh, the buzz. And I've incredible. given you shit before about other events where it was like, there's no energy in the room. No. But like in Hanoi, you felt the excitement oh, and course. electricity out there. And why take that away from the players? Yeah. Why take that opportunity and that experience away from the players? Will Hanoi go on then? Of course Hanoi's happening. Yeah. I fly out there in two weeks for meetings. You know, that was all scheduled. That's always been yeah. scheduled in. Um, you know, where I'm going out there, I'm looking at the Reyes Cup venue. Oh, people have been asking about that. Yeah, which people is great. are asking about that. But look, Hanoi's happening. It happened last year. Look, we were in the same boat last year. It went ahead. Yeah. It's happening. Um, and anything from our side, look, I just go back to the point of we listen to the players. If they got a problem, we're here. And whatever happens, Sorry. listen, I'll, I'll always just support them. They got any problems or anything like that? I'm, I will always fight for them. I'll, I'm, listen. I know I might be a pain in the ass sometimes. No, <laughs> not you, Emily. <laughs> but I'll be in their corner fighting for them because we're building a tour for them, and we're not just building a tour so you know in a couple of years' time they can, you know, get a bigger house or you know they can go on a nice holiday well hopefully they can as no, well no no yeah. no wait we're we're doing this tour so they can pay off mortgages so yeah. they don't have to you know just go on holiday it's life changing they can provide for their family yeah. and they can pick and choose when they tr want to travel around the world they can set their family up they can do whatever they want like other sports exactly yeah. it should be life changing and in order to present those kind of opportunities for the players, we have to sit there and we have to stay focused. We've got our vision and we just go s steaming ahead. Because if we you know, stop the traffic lights here, 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 yeah. here, we ain't gonna achieve what we need to achieve. Does that put any more personal pressure on you to deliver more for them? Because they're, I mean, you go to bat for them what happened recently, they're going about for you the same way. You know, they're showing faith in you and they have over the years, you know, but do you feel like 
Does that motivate you and inspire you to just to keep on for them? Of course. I feel like a huge responsibility for the players because, you know, like we said, we, we've told them you're a pro. You know, you're, you're part of a pro tour now, yeah. so we got to bloody deliver. Right. Um, all I'd say is that, listen, <laughs> I'll just never give up. So <laughs> you're stuffed if you're against me because I will be there. Well, right into I the love death. that though. I love that. Yeah, I absolutely love that. So it's just, it's, you know, I, unfortunately, I've just got that drain, you know, yeah. that's in me. And yeah, it might be more And pressure. a lot of people echo that about you, you know, that I've talked to outside of the well, matchroom offices. Yeah. Well, the thing is just... Maybe not the WPA, but other, <laughs> other ones. The yeah. thing is, it's just with the players, it's just also they're human beings. Yeah. We all want to do a job that we love. Like, even the team that works in matchroom multi-sport, the moment that they don't enjoy the job, they should go somewhere else because we all love what we do. You get that vibe though from your, from your crew. Yeah. You really do. But they all work, at, they work their absolute nuts off. Yeah, they're like little mini relentless Emily's out there. Yeah, yeah. and it's fucking brilliant. It is, And yeah. I love them to death. Um, and every one of the people that come into the team have got nothing to do with Paul. Not one it's of them. Probably us. a good thing, Emily. No, it's good, but all of them all fall in love with the players. Yeah. You know, because it, it's their journey. Yeah, yeah. It's, again, presenting life changing opportunities for them. Look at Mickey. I yeah. mean, look at yeah. Mickey Krause. He's yeah, come yeah. up to me and we've said, Look, Mickey, you've got two Instagram accounts. You ain't posted even a picture. <laughs> What's going on? Yeah, and yeah. he's like, You know, shy Mickey. Yeah. And, you, and I hope he doesn't mind me saying this, but. He's like, you know, I don't really know what to say, what to post. You know, I'm quite camera shy. I said, Mickey, I'm just as bad as you. And he's got a great fucking story. He's yeah. got a brilliant yeah. story. And, you know, and we've sat with him today and we've said, listen, you can do this on your Instagram. You can do that yeah. because, listen, that's, that's nothing. That's got nothing to do with us. Right. It's his profile. But I want them to be able to have brands attached to them so then they can get sponsorship yeah. and they can get more of an income so then they can have their travel expenses travel around the world yeah want to promote their profiles we want to show their personalities it's when people try to i always find it funny when the players act in a certain way when a camera's not on them and then they get a bit more reserved when a camera goes i think no come on show me your emotion oh god you're preaching to the choir there because we I want that raw some players emotion. where they're just like mumbling as soon as the camera turns on <laughs> and when the camera's off they're fucking they're really animated yeah, that, and great like i'm the just key like, goes down, I'm trying like, to like <laughs> pull it out of them i know all too but well these guys these i love these guys yeah and it's not for the pressure or anything but i feel responsible to deliver for them because if we don't do it, what yeah. else is going to happen? Well, we, I mean, if we withdraw yeah. from Paul, yeah, what happens realistically? It's it's crazy to think about. Just in the last five plus years, the amount of events that you guys have either taken on or developed. The calendar, as much as I bitch complain about the traveling, and I'm sure they do to some extent as well. It's like there's opportunity for them, and it's great because there's pool all year round and you're exactly. wanting to watch all year round. We didn't get that before yeah. at all. Well, you got like, you got TV table, you got stream table, you got TikTok table. you got table. a TikTok table, what I is that? I yeah. love it. I, yeah. You know, we thought about it like two days ago, everyone killed me because I chained, we were actually just doing this two streaming tables and playing the TV table from the last 16. I was sat in this office um, three days before the event and I thought, fuck it, let's just play it on the TV table. Let's re-rig the cameras. Let's do it, like, why not? And then let's have a TikTok camera. Everyone's like, yeah, okay, cool, let's do it. Everyone How, has to How's work it been going, some... by the way? Huh? How's it been going? Bloody brilliant. Yeah. Our TikTok numbers are going up. But it's just, listen, we, we keep learning, we keep adapting because we're hungry for this tour to develop. And the moment that we, we turn up to an event and go, yep, same as last year, same as this year, yeah. same as that, listen, if that, if, uh, please, if that ever happens, I want you to come and tell me and I need to be, I need to be stopped. I need to quit. No, I mean, listen, you know, I'm not as intimidating and frightening as you can be at I'm times. Not, I'm literally. Uh, <laughs> I, I think, we, I think we, we've moved past that at this point <laughs> of our relationship. But at times you certainly were. But honestly, 
like you can tell the pride that you guys take in delivering a product out here. I mean, when you walk in from the very beginning, you can tell there's a buzz, there's um, different things that are added, like the TikTok mm -hmm. thing, which is great because you have this like segment of pool fans that are old and don't know what TikTok is, and then you have this whole new <laughs> generation of fans that that's how well, they get stuff delivered to them. We had um, the Atlantic City Boys and Girls Club come in. And so we normally do, you know, school groups that come into our events because it's all about inspiring the next generation. And this group come in and they're a bit older, so teenagers. And normally we have like more of a younger yeah. um, children that come in. And uh, so we were doing like this backstage tour and we're walking around and thinking, oh gosh, like they're, they're not really talking to me. They've got their headphones on, they're on their phones. Yeah. And I was like, oh God, I've got to get them excited about Paul here sort of thing. And we got up to the stream tables. I went, did you know that you're in the background? We're live on TikTok. And they went, what? What? And I was like, oh, okay, yeah. we got them here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now they're excited. And I'm like, yeah, we're live on TikTok. I'm like, what's the channel? I go, oh, Matt and Paul. And then all of a sudden they're interested. Yeah. They were like, oh, so they, I said, do you know Paul, right? And they're like, yeah. And it's like, well, they play professional Paul. Yeah. Oh, do they earn money? Yeah. And then we showed them backstage, the production, and then they were seeing all the cabling. And it's just... It's a whole new world for them. It's a whole yeah. new world. And, and, you know, this is what these events were about. And listen, I'd love more vendors. I want more vendors at our events. All of them. I don't want people to just pick and choose. I... I would like the more vendors, but we got to get more foot traffic as well. You know, we got to get more fans in the doors. Fans won't come unless they see that there's an atmosphere and there's more for them yeah, to yeah. do. Yeah. So, you know, we're kind of in this, you know, vicious cycle. But again, we sold more tickets this year than we did last year. That's good. So we're improving. Yeah. Um, and it's about us identifying, you know, a place that is good for the tournament. And I think that we found a good place here in Atlantic City in the next... And there's always, you know, future goals and things like that. And we've got a lot of plans in the pipeline. Um, but, you know, it's only fucking 24 hours in a day. Oh, uh, Lord, don't I know? <laughs> yes. I've been, every morning I think I'm going to get up at seven, then I get up at nine and I'm just, my whole day is gone. I feel like after I lose two hours. Get up but, at nine, gosh. Yeah. I know it must be nice, right? Yeah, yeah no. that must be I just, I'm just wore out from all the traveling. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> well, you mentioned the events and I'll get you out of here on this mm -hmm. World Cup of Pool. We're just going to pretend like it didn't <laughs> happen this year? That we, um, <laughs> fuck it up. <clears throat> there will be news coming out about the World Cup or... I've heard some news hanging around here over the last couple of oh, days. okay, that's nice. Yeah. Well, then why are you asking me for? Well, because I'm not allowed to say things without you know, <laughs> uh, people signing off these days. So um, Listen, stuff will come out of the World Cup or you just got to always think like, everyone kept asking me about the Rares Cup for ages. That's okay, fair enough. And when it was ready, I came out and said, Ego. It was my favorite event of the year. I mean, it is my favorite event of the year. I the love the World Cup of Paul. Yeah. Doesn't mean, you know, it just, if there's, there's always a reason for something. Yeah. So just stay patient. Everything's chill. Any, we, got, we got a very, very interesting, <sighs> exciting calendar for 2025. Any more roadblocks on the horizon for you guys? No. No. And if there is, we smash them down. All right. Thanks for your time, Emily. Appreciate it. That's it. Wasn't too bad.